Hello everyone and welcome back to my Fallout Wasteland Warfare Settlement Mode playthrough. We're up to the seventh episode of Season 3 and this one is going to be a bit of a different one because we will not be checking in with the Settlers of New Hope this week. But you'll hear more about that once we hear the quest overview. We will, however, do some housekeeping and as a result of your spending, your votes, you were pretty unanimous again, almost entirely. You opted to spend, of the 739 caps we ended with last time, 115 on a dedicated sniper nest within New Hope. That comes with it a sniper rifle, but it is not allowed to be brought on a mission. It has to stay in New Hope. But it's a sniper rifle, so it's, it's better than our hunting rifles. It's got good range on it, good armor pierce, etc. So that was 115 caps spent. However, it has been pointed out to me by another content creator of uh, Wasteland Warfare stuff that... There is an updated price list that includes all the up-to-date values of items. I was using an out-of-date version. I could not find the up-to-date version for the life of me last week. I have now found it. So the Ultra Jet we sold, uh, it was actually five more caps than I did sell it for. So we're going to correct that now by adding five more caps to the kitty. And since we're not dealing with New Hope this week, they are just going to be said to just be doing trade, building, etc. So we're going to give them 120 caps, the equivalent of a loss in a match but it's just so they gain something which does mean that we can already say that we're ending today with 749 caps in total once you add in that correction as well so after this video go to the community tab and you'll be able to decide whether or not we spend some of that 749 or if you bank it for a week and then maybe get something more expensive next week so a bit odd that we can say that now prior to even seeing what's happening today on that note, we're going to go straight to the mission briefing, because this should be a fun one. Quest 7, Meanwhile. Frank's plans have been going well, but he always wants, no needs, more. How else is he going to get back at the New Hope settlement? They humiliated him, and that deserves recompense. He needs a place to call his own, a place to work from, a place to lead from. He's found such a place. It seems it isn't empty, but who cares about that? He wants it, so he'll have it. So there you have it, this week we'll be checking in on Frank and his Frank's Ferrell's Raider Gang and what they're up to. He's found a building that he's decided is his and they're going to be claiming it today. So for Frank we are using the Kellogg stat card just to show that he's been training and getting better and stronger. He's also equipped with heavy Raider armour. Which really compared to his normal stats just makes his energy defence one better so it's not really relevant this time. He is also armed with his trademark double barrel shotgun. For the rest of his Frank's Ferals currently here, we have four Raiders who are going to be using the Raider Outlaw card. Two of them are just having pipe pistols and machetes, and two of them are in T-45 power armors, one of which is armed with a shish kebab, and the other one is armed with a flamer. So they will be starting right in front of the building. The building itself is filled with settlers, traders, and whatnot, but they'll all just be mostly using the settler stat card and we'll talk about the rest of what will be happening the win conditions and there is a lose condition once they're set up but they're not setting up in the corner of the table the the setup here is frank has approached wanting to get into the building so they're starting right in their faces as you'll see in a second so frank's ferals are set up and here is the building that they are conquering the goal for them today is to wipe out everyone inside or turn them to his side and it will be across a series of, well, three floors counting the ground floor. And the setup is Frank, with a couple of his associates, who don't look as intimidating because they're not in power armour, have approached the front desk. It's being used by settlers, traders and the like as a kind of gambling den, a place to trade caps, rest and whatnot. And rather than just ask to get in, he is simply threatening them and telling them to get out. And as a result, violence quickly occurs. So he and his two Raider Outlaws without power armor will be entering from here to show that they are getting the jump on the poor settlers and whatnot that are living in here. They will be going first, specifically Frank will be activating first, but then it will alt alternate and we'll talk about each floor as we clear it because each setup is going to be slightly different. His two gang members, Raider friends, in T45 are waiting at this side entrance here. They will not activate until the door has been breached. So once Frank or one of his compatriots have crossed that door then they will activate or be in the activation pool and their goal is to charge in and flank from the site but then after that there's a, another floor to conquer as well and they want to find whoever's in charge and get rid of them there will be one special rule however Frank 
if he is within yellow distance, and I'll just show you what yellow distance looks like in case you're unaware, yellow distance from his base, like that, if after he activates, or one of the settlers activates, and they're still within yellow of him afterwards, after their turn, and they're at half health or below, Frank will roll on his charisma check, and if he passes it, and his charisma isn't great, so it's not super high chance, but if he passes his charisma check, he has convinced them to lay down their arms and join him instead. His charisma stat is a 4, so not super likely, but just as an added thing, because he does want to shore up his numbers a little bit. So, I think that covers everything. Oh, and you know what it doesn't? The settlers have an assortment of shotguns, pipe pistols, and 10 mil pistols. Uh, we'll talk about each person as they activate who they're equipped with, but that's the general idea. The Brahmin there is just for flavour, basically, and it will scatter as soon as the shooting starts. Which, speaking of, I think we are ready to jump into the first turn of 5. If the building isn't cleared or converted by the end of turn 5, Frank has failed. Uh, there's no consequence of that for New Hope, at least in the short term. But either way, let's see what happens. So as just mentioned, the game is getting started with Frank going first. He got the drop on the poor guards at the door. I, I think I said they were equipped with double barrel shotguns as well. I misspoke. Frank has a double barrel shotgun. They have combat shotguns. The, the same as the uh, Free Tech in New Hope. But anyway, Frank is cracking out that double barrel shotgun, which he can only fire once per turn unless he gets a lucky result on the blue die you roll as part of the roll, along with a green and a black die. He is hitting on sevens and he is shooting the uh, the poor guard over this other side of the desk he's at. And that's a seven on the dot, so it does hit. The bottle cap does nothing with a double barrel shotgun. Two extra damage, it does three damage base. That's five damage versus one armor. It does not matter if he blocks it. He didn't. So that's just five damage. He just splatted his head off, flew into the fridge at the back there and is just paced. He is gone. Frank does have another action, uh, but he can't fire his gun. So he will simply just move towards the door for next turn. And he can't do a check to try and convince them, despite what he just did to their friend, because they're not at half health yet. Well, the startled other guard is activating, again just using the Settler card. If she'd rolled for objectives, she would have run inside and helped everybody prepare and warn them about what's about to happen. But no, she got attack. Uh, it's, the result was attack with melee weapon. She doesn't have a melee weapon, so she's just going to stay where she is and shoot her shotgun. And the first shot is going to go into Frank with that combat shotgun. It's two black dice hitting on sixes. And that is a hit. It comes down by one. So that is three damage versus three armor on Frank. He actually just blocked it all. And I guess she'll unload the other shot into him. He is the closest threat. Let's see how that goes. A seven is not good enough. I would have done three damage again. I did just say it was a six to hit, didn't I? Yes, yes I did. So the other shot goes wild. She's not on half health, so no charisma check to see if she converts. But she is now just standing there with the two... Uh, Raider Outlaw is bearing down on her. Again, these two don't activate until the interior is being used. Not that it's really relevant to what's going to be happening here, but when Frank shot his shotgun, uh, it was within the presence radius of the Brahmin here, so it would have startled away its movement. I'm choosing to believe this is once again Daisy, and it is running away, and Frank might be about to inadvertently deal with its owner. The first of the two Raider Outlaws without power armor activated. They have a massive charge distance of green, so obviously much more than is enough, or much more than is required rather, to charge into the settler. He's going to swing at her with his machete. For his charge bonus, he's taking a green die because they're they're not great stat. So he's going to try and use that extra green die to land a hit. Machete just adds a green and a black normally, and he's hitting on fives. No, no, not fives. Sorry, fours. Even worse, fours. And it is a seven that comes down to a six, so that is a whiff. Well, let's see if the other one can do what the first could not. The other Raider Outlaw charged in. He's getting a green die bonus for being the number bonus now, so he's taking a black die for his charge bonus. So double green, double black. Let's see what it can do. A three, it already hit. Ooh, that is spicy. That is four damage versus one armor. If she doesn't block it, she's dead. She doesn't block it. She's dead. The machete just finds its mark and guts her down on the floor. Well, that's one recruit that ain't joining. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the machete is base damage one, not base damage two. So she is in fact alive, because she only took three damage. She's alive on one health, so it is possible that Frank might recruit her, but next turn he'll definitely be charging in because they need to move quickly to make sure they clear everyone out. Otherwise they might go spread word of what's happening here. 
So we're already at the end of the first turn, but from the second turn onwards it will be a lot more busy because there will be a lot more activations in general as Frank breaches the ground floor of the building. We are still going to do event cards. Most of them are most likely not going to have any effect because of the nature of the mission. We're inside a building, etc. But we're going to draw them anyway just in case. And this is a lucky find. Select a model at random if not engaged to get an item. That's not going to be relevant here. So the second turn is going to start with that surviving settler guard and she's going to use her shotgun in close combat so her skill is down by 2 to 4 required. Uh, was that a 6 before? Yep. So it's 4 required. They're both identical when full health so it doesn't really matter who she's hitting. Well she did definitely land a hit. Broke armor. Standard armor on the Raider Outlaw is 2 so they're down to 1. Did not block any and took 2 damage from that shotgun. Oh sorry no the, yeah the shotgun is base 2 damage. Yes, I guess it is. Pipe pistol is also base 1 damage. Let's just put it on the one that missed his first swing as punishment. <laughs> that seems fitting. And then her second shot. It is not a hit on a 10. So that is her turn, but she ended her turn within yellow of Frank there. And she's below half health, or below. She's got 1 health remaining. So he's going to do a charisma check. On a 4 or less, she puts down her gun and decides, hang on a second, this is a bad situation, I'm just going to join you instead. Self-preservation. She actually did join them. Self-preservation prevails. Frank worm tongues and whispers in her ear and convinces her to join. Now, she is heavily wounded and will not take part in the massacre inside, but she lays down her arms and is now a member of their team. First activation of the second turn for Frank's Ferals is going to be the man himself and his first action is going to be to run inside the building. So I'm just making that known before we have to move the camera around a little bit to see the inside. And that does also mean now that the two in the power armor there can be selected to activate as well. So here is what the floor inside looks like in terms of enemies and placement. Frank has moved in just inside the doorway right there and he's going to be shooting at a random vault dweller that happens to be in here. She's got a 10 mil pistol. Uh, he's got a pipe pistol, again just using the settler stack card for all of these. He once again has a combat shotgun and the gentleman at the top of the stairs there has a 44 revolver. But again just using the settler stack card for ease of remembering. So Frank's moved in and he's shooting that vault dweller, hopefully not killing her and instead just wounding her enough that she decides to pick the winning side on sevens. That is a six that comes down by three. Uh, the bottle cap once again doesn't do anything with the Nope, so that is 3 damage versus 1 armor. Actually, does the Vault Dweller have more armor? Nope, 1 armor as well. 1 armor, didn't block any of it, took 3, which does drop her below half health. She has 4 health as well, like a standard settler. Uh, I might just keep the damage markers on their stat cards because of you know how tight the space is in there, so just uh, trust me that I'm covering it. So that's his turn though, because he moved in shot. So we're going to do a Charisma check for her, see if he can whisper in her ear. And see if she is not convinced. Nope, she is not convinced. She'll be doing an activation. Although we are going to randomize, as normal, which one of them activates. Well, our Vault Dweller that just got shot for three of her four health is the one that randomized to activate. She is going to attack. She had an option to fall back on her, her AI card, but that didn't work. She just wants to attack at range. So she's going to fire a 10 mil pistol into, Ke I was going to say Kel into Frank twice. It hits on threes with a black and a green die. The first one does hit. Wow! For three extra damage, that's five damage in total versus Frank's three armor. So he blocks two, takes three. That's actually pretty nasty. He's He's got seven health. Uh, once again, I'm going to put it on his stat card rather than in there, just because of how tight it is. But yeah, that is uh, pretty damaging, especially because she gets another shot. That's why you don't mess with Vault Dwellers. They push back sometimes, although not this time. Oh no, it comes down by three, so it does. That is three damage versus three armor. He blocks one, takes two more. <laughs> that is why you don't mess with him. All of a sudden, Frank's on five damage. He has two health left. But he also has a big gang behind him that are going to hopefully help him a little bit. Oh, I did forget at the end of her turn, though, she is within yellow and at half health or less. Does he whisper in her ear? He does. That counts as a one. So even though she just shot him to who knows what, she actually realizes the odds are still not in her favor in the long run with the rest of his gang here and decides you know what us vault dwellers we uh, we we trust in self-preservation how about i side with you on this one so one of the raider outlaws in power armor activated next and they don't suffer fall damage so he just charged forwards 
right down into the midst of them to be the closest threat as well to give Frank a chance to live. Attacking the settler at the roulette table there. It's the one armed with the, the shish kebab. Now unfortunately T45 armor reduces your agility and that's what Raider Outlaws use for their attack stat. So it brings them down to needing a 3. So throwing in a green die as the charge bonus to help try and even that out a little bit. But the shish kebab rolls yellow, black, blue. And let's see, that is a 6 that comes down. Oh, it comes down by 3. It does actually hit. Amazing. With one armor break, so he doesn't get armor. Does the bottle cap do anything on a shish kebab? No, you need a star. A star is set on fire. But that is just a uh, two flat damage. So that is fine by me. Again, I'm going to put it on the stack card because there's not enough room. Now that also means once he activates, unless he moves, he'll have to do a charisma check for Frank whispering in his ear as well. But for now, he's the closest threat, so hopefully these three will just shoot at the power armor somewhat fruitlessly. So the settler behind the, uh, I was going to say blackjack, but I guess that's maybe poker. Poker table there is going to fire with his pipe pistol and it is the nearest threat so he's going to shoot into the combat here. That also means he's got a massive chance to hit on a 9. So he's got a good chance of this going through. Pipe pistol is 1 base damage, double black. And it does hit, so that is 2 damage. And he has to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to see who he's hitting in it. And that is the, the power armor. Okay, fair enough. So with the T45 or whatever it is, that is 2 plus 1 physical armor. He blocks a total of 2, takes no damage, but Robin gets another shot. His name might actually be Robin, who knows. And that's a crit fail, the first crit fail of the match. Okay, well, nothing there. The other set of power armor stomped in the building, around the corner there, turning with a yellow movement, and then putting him just within yellow range of, I guess he's the floor manager up there, he's armed with a 44, and he's using a flamer, so the flamer has yellow short range, which is why that was relevant. Rolls a green and a blue, and it does a bunch of stuff on the blue die, uh, depending on the result, and does hit in an AoE if it lands, two damage orange radius around the target, or from the target, I think that means, because it's only got the one diagonal, uh, but it doesn't matter because he's on the upper floor, so it wouldn't spread down to the, the ground floor currently. And it is a hit. Now the nuke usually does good stuff. What does the nuke do for this? On the flamer die is one extra damage. Two base plus the one on the green die. That is four damage versus one armor. He doesn't block any of it and gets burnt to a crisp. Goodbye floor manager. It's just your boss waiting on the upper floor for us now. Once we deal with the, the trash down here. Well with the untimely death of the floor manager. It is just uh, the settler over here at the table that is left to activate for them. So he is using his combat shotgun in close combat against the power armor shish kebab wearing or <laughs> wielding Raider Outlaw and that means his chance to hit goes down to four. First shot, it is a hit for two extra damage. That is really good, that is four damage versus two plus one armor. So damage is getting through regardless. He blocks none of it, but the power, uh, the super armor kicks in, blocks that. Takes three, and that is enough to shatter that guy's T45 power armor. So it's now just a broken frame for him, so that's his stats reduced. Although on a plus side, I think... Uh, let's see, does the agility go back up? Nope, the agility stays down. So it's basically just a, a debuff at this point. And he gets another shot, and so the blade of health gone too. He does not get his second hit, which is just as well, because that would have been four damage. Oh, before we move on to what is happening, there's a charisma check for the settler is within range of Frank. He did not pass it, so that's fine. So what is happening is we've got the two Raider Outlaws left. The first one, the one with two damage, has charged in to help take out this one with the Shish Kebab power armor and is going for the double black, double green special that we talked about earlier. So let's see if he lands it. And this is on a four. He doesn't have power armor. It's a six. Oops, I did knock that. It was a six. I don't know what was that, but it came down to a five only. So that was a miss regardless. It's getting messy in the gambling hall, but the other Raider Outlaw without power armor walked in and he's shooting the pipe pistol at the one behind the table there because he doesn't want to shoot into combat where odds are he'll hit one of his friends. On a four. Dead on a four, one flat damage, so it becomes two, two versus one armor. He blocks one, takes one. So he's still got three health left, and I think he has two health left. So at the end of the second turn, they've almost finished clearing out the interior of the building. They have one more floor to go after this though, so they do need to hurry up. Although Frank has converted two of them to his side, so he's shoring up the numbers of his gang. Although he himself is also hurting pretty bad thanks to getting multiple bullet wounds. And let's see what the event is and whether or not it's relevant to what we're doing. 
unbearable heat, each player picks one of their own models simultaneously this round. The selected models will get only one action, not two. This does not affect quick actions. Um, I guess this would also affect AI as well then. Um, how would we apply this? I guess we'll roll the 50-50 die for each AI as they activate until one gets a bad result. And if they get a bad result, they only get one action. So to get the third turn started, the settler down here with two raiders on him is the one who's activated and he did not roll to lose one action, which means by default it will be the one behind the table because there's the only two currently active settlers. So he's just firing his shotgun, he's going to shoot into the power armor that he successfully broke last turn because he could actually kill them. If he does it in the first shot, he could kill the other outlaw raider in the second shot. So let's see, this is on fours. That's a nine, so nope. So he won't be doing both things, but he could still achieve Taking out the Raider and Power Armor, comes down to a 7, not good enough. He whiffs both shots and then he ends his turn within Yellow Frank and below half health or at half health. Let's see if he is convinced. He is not convinced, he is fighting to the bitter end. So for Frank's Ferals, I've selected the Power Armor with the Flamer to only get one action. Everyone else is going to get their normal turn. And I'm going to activate the Raider Outlaw without Power Armor that's already in this combat to take two swings with the Machete, minus one black die for not being a charge bonus this time to see if he can land a hit on a 4. A 4 that comes down to a 0, uh, sorry a minus with 1 actually, so it's just 2 flat damage, oh sorry 1 flat damage on the machete versus, oh, oh, he blocked it so never mind, he is clinging to life and a crit fail, Ooh, somebody's getting killed there. Well the settler behind the table sees where this is going so he's going to shoot at Frank because he's not going to shoot into that mess over there. He's only getting the one shot because of the event and that is not a hit on a 7, he would have needed a 6. So he has missed and that is his turn. So now I've kind of got free reign with the rest of my guys but to stay on schedule we need to clear the floor of this turn. Well let's go with the least likely to achieve something, the broken power armor with the shish kebab. So hitting on 3's. He actually got a 3 on the dot and a nuke, which is an extra damage, right? Yes. So in total, that is 4 damage, breaks the one armor. He just one shot them. That's for breaking the power armor, I guess. His head comes off clean. And this time there's no mistake. We accidentally almost drag him with us. There we go. So he does have another action left, but he doesn't have a gun. And I don't want to try and tie up the other guy in combat. So we'll just see he starts his transition upstairs here to get to the third and final area. Frank brings his shotgun to bear from where he is there, suffering quite profuse bleeding. But he's going to try and shoot that shotgun into him, hitting on sevens. Can he achieve it? That is a, no, that's not a nine, that is a six. Does the nuke do anything? It would, oh, that means he could fire it twice in the one turn. That's what that means. That's the best possible result when you use a, a use this weapon. That is four damage for, he can't survive. He didn't block any. Yeah, he just blows his head off. He, his corpse falls behind there. So, that is technically his turn, but he's also going to use another action to go up to the next floor. As is him, as are, as is him, the only person who will be lagging behind is him. So we're going to transition to the next floor. He will appear uh, with one action in the next turn, but the transition over will carry us to the next turn. So as most of the group is transitioning to the final floor of the building, other than the roof itself, I suppose, that is going to count as a turn over. And we're going to go into the turn four of five. Let's go for this event, see if it's something relevant. Since, aka nothing. So as we get around to starting turn four, here's what the final floor of the building other than the roof itself looks like. There is just two more guards left, one armed with the combat shotgun, one armed with the pipe pistol, guarding the way through to where the boss is of the, the casino slash hotel that's been running out of here. Four out of the five of them have transitioned already. One of them will get up, the other, the wounded uh, outlaw, will get up with one action remaining and start roughly where Frank is here. The uh, raiders do not have advantage, so will be one of the guards that activates. He's not leaving his office, but if he does activate, he will shoot through a window here, because there is actually a, an open window. Of the settlers on the upper floor, it was the one front and center with the combat shotgun that's activating, and he's shooting straight into the shish kebab wielding a raider in the broken power armor. Two shots on sixes. That is a miss. He's panicking. He gets another shot though. And if it does well enough. Oh, oh, it's a nine. If that had hit, on the assumption it went through the armor, it would have just killed him. 
Well, Frank gives a nod to the other power armor wielding raider, the one with the flamer, and is like, toast them. So he is targeting the one that's already activated, but he's going to hit both of them because it's range orange from the target. At least I presume that's what that symbol means. So he is burning them, and that's on fours. First attempt is a hit. Does the bottle caps do anything? Yes, it breaks armor with a minus one. And I think that roll just goes against both of them with how this weapon works. If that's wrong, do let me know because the flamer is a little confusing with its icons. But that does seem like it's two damage to both of them with one armor break, which means both their armors are broken, so they just flat take two damage. Put that there for for both of them, just so that's out of the way. And he's gonna do it again. It's not a heavy weapon, so he can do it twice. Didn't actually set anyone on fire with this so far. What does he need for that? He needs a star. An eight is not good enough. The nuke would have done extra damage. That would outright kill both of them if it landed. Well, the other wounded settler now at the back there. He is activating, firing his pipe pistol at the damaged power armor wielding outlaw. So that is one flat damage with two black dice, and that is definitely a hit. That's two damage against, with the broken armor, it's just flat three, no super armor. He blocks one, takes one, so that is him. Well, he's onto his own, own health now, so he has three health left because the power armor ablative health is gone. And then the second shot is also a hit with an armor break, so two damage, oh uh, sorry, one damage versus two armor. Doesn't block any, takes two more. He is on one hit remaining. Mr. Shish Kebab wearing power armor. That means the manager of the place may actually be able to finish you off by shooting through the window. Well, Frank's seeing one of his friends slash gang members getting murdered slowly. He just kind of has a smile on his face. He's activating, doesn't particularly care about the Shish Kebab wielding um, Raider Outlaw. He's firing a shotgun at the closest threat and we'll see what kind of result he gets. And it's, oh, that's a crit. The double bottle caps were nothing. Yep, that's nothing. But that still is three damage versus one armor. He has two health left, so even if he does block one damage, which he does, it does not matter. He is splatted into paste by that powerful double barrel shotgun. Frank's then gonna move into the room here and end his turn having a little whisper into this guard's ear to see if he can't convince him that what he's doing is futile. And he did convince him it's futile. So with that, he is gone from the map for the purposes of this because he has turned turncoat and is now one of Frank's ferals. Hearing what's happening in the room next door and sort of seeing it through the window as well, the manager of the place activated and flees through a side door up onto the roof where Frank will need to give chase. So Frank gets up onto the roof and finds the manager of the establishment hiding behind a couch and with a tap of his forehead decides to show him why he calls his gang Frank's ferals, activating that subdermal creature controller he's got and three feral ghouls come sprawling out of the staircase from behind him. It's not looking so good for the manager of the place but that is confirmed as there is a roar and he hears something climbing up the building behind him and out from there appears a Deathclaw. Let's see what happens to the poor manager as the Deathclaw initiates an attack. There would actually be an extra black die for a charge bonus, that black die is for a strength bonus. So that is definitely a hit, it breaks his one armour, its base damage is two. So it did two, I believe it also would have done a stun. The manager gets clawed in half by the death claw, sealing his fate and making this Frank's establishment. Satisfied with the day's work, Frank sits down, kicks up his feet and thinks about what he's going to do next with all the new members he's enrolled, quote unquote, into his Frank's Ferrell's Raider faction, along with all the creatures he's controlling with that creature controller he obtained. And that is where we're going to end off today and as discussed at the top of the video it was a quiet week for New Hope. They only earned 120 caps. Uh, that left us with, what was it, 749 I believe it was. Either way, you can head over to the community tab within the next hour and expect to see a post that you can vote on on whether or not they spend on anything or save their funding for another week. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this little side story showing what the villain is up to and we'll continue to support the series and going forward any and all support is very welcome and is reinvested in the channel. 
Hope you enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. And until next week, ta for now.